I'm Annalisa. I'm Maggie. I'm Nicole. And I'm Leah. We're a team of mental health professionals from Unleashed Counseling. Welcome to Bibliotherapy, a self-help book club podcast. Let's book it. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Bibliotherapy with Unleashed Counseling. Um, This week, we are kicking off with By Yourself, the effing lilies. I feel like I should do the ding ding (laughs) got the little asterisk by tara schuster so it's an extended title by yourself the effing lilies and other rituals to fix your life from someone who's been there it's a really long title but we're gonna (laughs) we're gonna kick it off um i personally so far i'm loving this and it's amazing um that the implementation of a pretty font can like make your reading experience better oh well, what's the font yes oh it's like um she has like you know it's like a script font so it's like it's fun to read um the chapter for titles. the chapter title oh yeah. okay and I'm just like huh I don't know it's just like nice aesthetically pleasing <laughs> <laughs> Uh, So let's see, she kicks it off in the first chapter, kind of, um, kind of kicks it off kind of on a, on a deep level. She's talking about her parents and her childhood. uh, Yeah. And um, the, the first thing, but again, with these humor, like, you know, the, the humor implementation in these books is so amazing when her parents are talking about uh, or her parents are fighting over whether they should take their kids to see um, Goodfellas or Misery. And it's like, <laughs> you know, which one is the lesser of the two evils? That was so funny because I was like, that's so my parents. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it was, a, you know, a, a, a kind of deep chapter to kick it off. And um, her parents went through, you know, a, di- a divorce, what an eight year divorce. Could you imagine? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And her parents, like, oof, they, not that I want to judge, but it's hard not to. They do not seem like nice people. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, there was, like, that one part where, like, they're fighting in the restaurant and, like, just going back and forth, back and forth at each other. And then you have, like, Tara, who's, like, crying, like, like, please just put the hats on. You love each other. Like, just, like. (laughs) trying to like keep them together and it's really like looking at their the dynamic between the parents is very much so of like two people who look at like they how they are looked at by other people and wanting to have a certain persona um that doesn't necessarily also encompass uh, like a parent Mm -hmm. um and it's it's sad to like listen to like or well, read but like mm-hmm. you know hearing mm-hmm. it in my head <laughs> yes. um about like how this led to a lot of of hurt as an adult for for her and, and it really speaks to um you know how we're molded by our early you know childhood mm-hmm. yeah, yeah my and- heart went out to her so many times yeah and really. she's talking about the, the voicemails her mother leaves her or left her I guess past tense hopefully that doesn't happen anymore but yeah. just you know like ripping into her calling her a pathological liar and and other terrible things and then let's go get a pedicure it's your mother bye it's like whoa yeah. that is so confusing and so toxic. terrible yeah 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 and you know uh, her when her parents were divorced um they just decided that it would be the easiest thing to split her and her sister you know mm-hmm. between the parents so they wouldn't have to ever see each other um and you know it's heartbreaking because she talks about how like her sister was kind of the only um solace that she could find and then they were just you know separated so it's like 
geez, like this, this girl has been through a lot. You can already tell. Yeah. But it's, we're, we're focusing on the, the dark stuff, but there's a lot of light, at least in the first half of the book, right? She definitely is so resilient, right? She has so many wonderful um, coping skills. And I, I, I really appreciate that she talks about her vices in a way that I'm going to say like the average person can probably relate to, right? She smokes too much weed, right? She's buying supermarket cupcakes. Um, So, and I'm coming from a place of like working with folks who have pretty severe addictions um, that they're trying to overcome. And, and that's, that's a a different thing, right? But what she's talking about, like, well, maybe it's not that different, but I, I just appreciated that she made it so relatable. It's like, no, you don't have to be, you know, an alcoholic drinking, uh, you know, a handle a day to need help, right? You could just be smoking too much weed and realizing that you're, you're trying to cover up the anxiety and you can, you can still work through that, right? I, I totally agree with that. I feel like a lot of times when you, in a lot of different books, it, it shows like what rock bottom looks like for somebody who is going through a, like a, an addiction, right? Which not to say that smoking too much weed or having a bottle of wine, you know, on your weekends can't lead to an addiction or be considered an addiction, but like going to the like rock bottom of going to rehab or feeling like you're not addicted enough or sick enough Mm -hmm. and the fact that she really humanizes the fact that a lot of us have vices that might not necessarily lead us to go to a detox center or to a rehab but we're still able to have a like a counselor to go to right Mm -hmm. the fact that she drunk dials her counselor oh i forgot about that part yeah i the i was I was I was crying and laughing at the same time because I'm thinking like first off whoa and also the fact that like you hear like you see that the counselor is saying that she's talking about feeling so low Mm -hmm. at that point of like you know she's supposed to be celebrating her birthday and she feels like she has no one she has nothing she like is really feeling all of the feels um, and is drunk dialing her counselor to tell her about these things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it really does kind of bring it to a very human level of, okay, like, you know, this kind of stuff can happen. And this also means that like, you can, you can talk to somebody about it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're not alone in that. Um, but yeah, that, I, I mean, to start off the book, at that level, right? The first line is, this is rock bottom. She does not hold back, right? No. <laughs> uh, so I, I also found her really funny, right? Yeah. So it, she, she was, I don't know that I teared up at any parts, but my heart definitely felt full as I was listening to some of the, the darker stuff. And also she made me laugh a lot. She made me feel really hopeful. There were some things that she suggested, and I got to admit, I'm going to interrupt myself. I, I listen to these audiobooks rather than reading them. And I do it like while I'm walking, while I'm, and I do it all like at once, right? Like mm-hmm. yesterday and today is when I read this book. Right. And as I was listening to her, her recommendations, like, you know, write your gratitude list. Um, didn't every author tell us that so far? Yes. <laughs> every author that we've read. Um, uh, write thank you notes to people like everybody and anybody I'm like this is so great she's giving all these wonderful recommendations and because I'm packing the the reading in or the listening in I'm not actually following these authors suggestions and I made a commitment to myself like going forward I'm gonna read a little bit a day and try to do the things these authors are telling us over yeah. and over again <laughs> yeah, yeah no I totally agree yeah, she, you know, she talks about how journaling quickly turned into like her, her mode of self care. And, and she also talks a lot about doing the things that you love to do when you were younger, um, because that, you know, brings like you inner, your inner joy and your like the deepest parts of your soul out. And I'm like, Oh, my God, I, and I'm sure I've said this before, I used to write all the time, I used to journal all the time, it didn't matter what I was journaling about it it just like I would always do the um like 
stream of consciousness journaling journaling when you first wake up in the morning um and I I haven't done it in so long and I'm just like oh my gosh I need to sit down and do some writing because I it it does it works like you're it's it's like you're you're venting to yourself about yourself When she also puts it in a very real way of it's not like she woke up one day and had all of these awesome coping skills, right? Mm-hmm. Like, especially when she was talking about the workout part, yeah. I, I, I felt that so hard. That is me to a yeah. T of like, I was that presidential fitness kid mm-hmm. who was like walking the half of a mile. I, I didn't a, care. I put a little flag <laughs> on that part. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just I, was, I felt that when she's like does does that is that still a thing was that nationwide I'm like yeah I remember doing that and hating yeah. every single second of it especially the part where you have to like you know the thing where you put your feet on it and you have to push it yeah or you can push it I was like oh my goodness I I absolutely hated that but like the fact that she was like, okay, it's not like I woke up and started to run a marathon or I woke up and had these long gratitude lists that I wholeheartedly believed in. Like she literally thought that the gratitude list was stupid. When yes. she first started. What was the name of her friend that she, <laughs> she oh, oh, and Julia and, um, and what's her face? Um, she did it like three times. Eliza. Yeah. Was it was Eliza. Eliza the one? Eliza's one, Julia is the one that was running. Amazing. So funny. I like, I love it because it totally made, like, I feel like in some books, it'll be like, start this coping skill and you'll be great at it right when you start, right? Like, you know, have these gratitude lists. And I, you know, I, I feel like it makes it very human. I've heard from clients before of like starting these things are really hard and sometimes they do feel kind of awkward or weird or, or fake at stupid. first stupid yeah like it just feels like oh, I'm being inauthentic by okay I'm grateful for the notebook I'm writing in or right. like you know like or you know Definitely. the sunshine outside and you're like oh come on like you know and then as like she goes on she's realizing that there's so many things to be grateful for and then after doing it for like, what, like a year or so, mm-hmm. she was like, I have thousands of reasons to be grateful that I can look back at, you know, mm-hmm. but I just like the fact that it's not like, you know, a bunch of coping lists, right? Because that's, I mean, buzzword right there, you know, mm-hmm. coping skills, learning all these different things to make yourself feel better. It's not a one and done kind of thing. It has to be consistent. And after a while, it becomes part of your day where you're okay with spending a half hour, hour for journaling and gratitude writing and those kinds of things. But it doesn't happen just, you know, like that, right? Right. Mm-hmm. She says, you know, fake it, fake it till you make it. Fake the gratitude until you make the gratitude. So um, how, how you said it, it, it might feel weird or uncomfortable or fake to, to begin with, you kind of just have to push yourself and force yourself to keep you know it's another it's just another regimen it's another routine that you have to get used to um but that's the title of that chapter is like fake it till you make it I'm pretty sure there were so many moments in this book where I I I was like wow I could have written this I feel like she's talking about me so the the presidential challenge thing right like a flashback to seventh grade or whatever it is with my best friend Danielle and how we just like stubbornly refused to run and just walked the mile and, and made the gym teacher so mad <laughs> like I was like oh my gosh Danielle and I could have written this or um when she calls her friend and says like what what is my well of inspiration like what makes me passionate and inspired and her friend was like well that's easy it's travel and I was like oh, I want to be traveling so <laughs> badly right now <laughs> very relatable Mm -hmm. no yeah for sure and like I feel like some of the things that she was saying of um with like talking with her friends especially about breakups it was very interesting of like the when she was talking about the one um the one guy Keats I think it was in college of like he was like this like brooding like theater guy of course he was his name was Keats 
Yeah, right. <laughs> Did he choose that name, I wonder? I, you know, I was thinking that because I was like, hmm. um, but like she so wanted to like have this relationship, but also was trying to, you know, find her way um, as a person and having to like experience that um, with a person that like you want to be with it is hard. Um, and the fact that she like admits to herself that she never fully processed some yeah. of these breakups like a mm-hmm. lot and she brings up a couple of them in the first half of the book where she learns different ba- like lessons from these uh from these relationships and the fact that she you know sees her one boyfriend that's newly engaged and was like that could have been me but I pushed him away and like there is a lot of different things that she puts in there about that which also is relatable um mm-hmm. You know, I I think that that was it's cool that she is able to be that authentic and funny at the same time of mm-hmm. like yeah. her her description of these guys is just like, cracks me <laughs> up. Yeah. Oh wait, you know what she says in the very beginning that um, she changed names and she she altered some of the details to spare people's um, well, to protect their privacy. Maybe right. she did pick Keith's on purpose. <laughs> it's very pretentious so it is. yeah it is a th- it, I could totally see a guy in the theater group with like a age. man bun man bun yeah. yes. <laughs> definitely or yeah definitely a man bun um maybe like some coke bottle glasses you know mm-hmm. definitely skinny jeans mm-hmm. anywho um <laughs> Is this someone you, you dated at one point, Maggie? <laughs> I can see him in my mind. <laughs> um, no. Uh, yes. Hey, listeners. After you're done listening, check out our awesome guide that is jacked full of ideas to practice self-care. Here's why you should grab up your free guide now. Because we love you because you deserve a break, because if you continue to go at the pace you're going, you'll burn out, because you may actually have forgotten how to do self-care. What are you waiting for? Head over to selfcaretips.org slash free guide and give yourself permission to do that thing that makes you happy. The part when she is talking about um, create like producing a play and she has a seat reserved for her one professor um, and she doesn't care about anybody else that's there. Um, it's a completely sold out uh, full theater and um, the professor doesn't show up and it is uh. heartbreaking. That was like, that made me like, it hurt me it hurt my yeah. heart I, I you know and it, it's it's sad because she talks about like appreciating the, your hype people and you know the people that build you up and having those lists um like the absolutely not are you crazy list like who you would not you should not go to you know like oh yeah so this person might be your best friend but maybe it's not the first person you're going to tell that you're getting married or, you know, something like that. Um, And it was just so sad because I'm like, you have so many people around you that are supporting you and that are are there Mm -hmm. for you there. And this one person didn't show, but I can, I can definitely relate to that. Like, I'm sure that's happened to all of us at some point. Yeah. Were you, were you thinking about who is on my hype list that I go to when I have a good idea versus who's on my road warrior list that I go to for the absolutely not list? I had a little bit of a hard time. Like I've got like one or two people in each category, but I wouldn't call it a list yet. So it's something I want to go back to keep thinking about. And I want to be on someone else's, like, I hope that I'm on someone else's hype list or road warrior list. Right. Definitely. Play I'm not on anyone's absolutely not are you crazy list <laughs> and I don't know about you guys but this just makes me want to buy myself flowers every time I go to the grocery store now like yeah eh, I'm gonna do it you I don't go to the I... grocery store very often though 
I, I do. Um, I, I don't really do the grocery shopping in our house, but I, I do the meal planning and the list. So I actually do put fresh flowers on the list most of the time. And it really, it's amazing how that small thing, like you get a budget, like seven bucks or whatever, cheap grocery store flowers, who cares? Yeah. But it really does like brighten the kitchen, makes me smile when I walk in. And I think of it as like, oh yeah, somebody loves me. That's me. Aww, yeah. <laughs> it is effective. It's like, um, and it's like our team, our team member, Heather, um, Heather is a, like a plant mom. And she was just talking about the other day in our team meeting, how it like brightens up her house and she's just gotten, um, so many plants and it brings her such joy to go to Lowe's. And it's like, I, you know, you don't think about it, but they, you know, it really does just, uh, lightens the atmosphere. Um, it just makes it like cleanses the energy it really mm -hmm. does, you know? Yeah. One of the other things I, I wrote down was her epitaph that she does not want. This one really struck home. She said, uh, I'll paraphrase it. It would be a real bummer if when I die, my gravestone reads, here lies Tara Schuster. She was super busy. Mm. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, ouch. Again, I feel like you're talking to me. Though I used to always schedule Fridays off and keep those days to myself, right? Like my daughter's still at school. I would just not plan anything. And I don't do that anymore. And I'm getting, I'm getting a look <laughs> and I should. For, for those listening to the podcast, <laughs> I am giving a look at Lisa at the moment. I, when I started, I remember one of the first things that was said is that she does not work on Fridays. And every so often I would see a little thing pop up you know, on the schedule that was on a Friday. Oh, they had to reschedule or, oh, you know, it's just, uh, I, I went on vacation. I have to catch up. And, and yeah. then it became more of a pattern. <laughs> God. God, no, I don't want to be super busy and, and I don't want that to be my gravestone. So I'm going to double down on my effort to schedule a date <laughs> night or afternoon or whatever for myself. So she does Monday nights, right? That's, that's her date night for herself. So yes, to be more specific, if she doesn't have a Monday night to herself, there will be a um, murder suicide situation. I think that's <laughs> yes, that, that chapter that's title. Her, her chapter titles yep. are brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you guys, because when I read this part of the book, I immediately asked my sister, I said, who is your Cleopatra? Um, Cause in the book, mm -hmm. she talks about, uh, she gets ready like Cleopatra. She goes through her routine the way a, a ruler would. And um, for me, or my, for my sister, I asked her and then I was like, oh, wait a second. Like, I don't have to ask you. I already know hers is 100% Audrey Hepburn. Um, and mine's Stevie Nicks. What about you guys? Who's your Cleopatra? Oh goodness. I don't, I don't think I got this far in the book. Oh really? Oh no, I did. Okay. Um, it's a little, it's like closer. It was in that gray area of like, am I halfway through the book or not? Yes. Um, but when I was reading this part, I actually was like, oh my God, who it, who, who is my Cleopatra? Because when I, I am that person or was that person who would think of like going out and getting a manicure or pedicure was like too much yeah. or spending time like to do my hair or, I'm uh, still for people person. who can't see me, I'm still in a bun right now. Um, but like, I very much so was like, oh, it's not worth it. But like listening or reading, keep saying listen, but um, like reading what she's saying of like, what, you know, how you feel about yourself and like, how, like what you do to like prepare yourself for the day can really set yourself up for the day. Um, and I was like trying to think of like, I don't really think I have like a one person that I would consider to be my Cleopatra. Like I honestly, part, part of the person that I thought of was my sister because she's one of those people who's just like, I don't like, you know, I don't care what other people think of me. I care of what I, how I think of myself. So the way that she gets ready, um, is very much so for, for her. Um, nice. and like, 
just really like focused on how do I want to look today so like shout out to Christina who like may or may not be listening to this podcast (laughs) she better um but she's definitely one of them yeah she just she talks just about like you know your your OG lady boss I think that's how she put it um you know it just it just got me thinking um about you know who who are like our female idols I guess Mm. Oprah she's Mm. one of my female idols Mm -hmm. you get a (laughs) what does she say you get a car and you get a car <laughs> yes um Brene Brown oh that's a good one she'd be an awesome hype man oh Meryl pink. Streep is also one of mine Ooh, pink did one. you say pink pink yep pink is a gray one mm-hmm. she's a boss yeah. the way she talks about With her, her daughter is like so inspiring to me wonderful yes and her like how she does uh acrobatics during like her live performances and she has to do like you know vocal training for that that's insane can you imagine I would be like (gasps) (gasps) (laughs) (laughs) I think that's a wonderful place to end the podcast (laughs) (laughs) Tara Schuster has got us thinking yeah oh yeah it's we've yet to pick a bad book uh, but then again we still have the rest of it to read so um two weeks from now we will have finished the book and talk about how she wraps it up yeah yeah all right bye thanks for listening bye-bye <laughs> bye <laughs>